All right, we are on chapter 9 and level 2, starting on page 572 of the text. And last level, what we did was we maximized the number of rackets we could produce um, given some inventory constraints of our resources. This level, we're going to look at um, determining how this order of rackets is going to fit into the zone's production schedule. Now since these are a um, specialty racket that we're making for this tournament, we don't want them to interrupt any of our regular production process. So we can only use um, extra time that we have in our process to be able to schedule these to get done. Okay? And so we've talked with the plant manager and he says that he can schedule us um, some production time to produce these. All right? And we have two different production steps. We have a molding operation as well as a finishing op operation. And each of those takes a specific amount of time for each model. All right? And the production plant has 70 hours of molding time that it can schedule us for. And it has 100 hours of finishing time that they can schedule us for, okay? So what that means is those um, times are now new constraints to our model that we have built into this worksheet here. All right? So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate our molding and finishing times per racket. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this worksheet here, maybe. There we go. All right. So we're going to call this worksheet size rackets and times. Okay. All right. So we need to insert into our um, worksheet here molding time and finishing time. So I'm just going to select this here. And we're going to insert two here. All right. We're going to call this molding time hours and finishing time in hours. Okay. So now we need to create a table similar to this one right here um, that has the uh, molding time and finishing time required for each model. Okay? So I'm just going to go down here. I'm going to call this production. Oopsies. Times. finishing time is 0.2 and 0.5. All right, so using that we can now calculate our time. So we're going to take the number of rackets we produce. And 
down. And just continue to copy that over. Perfect. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to make sure that all of our formulas are correct and they're working. Um, because if our formulas aren't correct, it could result in our solver model ending up with um, an infeasible solution or it could cause us to have an incorrect solution from our solver model, which would be even worse. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say I'm only producing one of each racket here and that will just let me know if everything is correct because I should end up with the same numbers in each of my um, tables here. So my carbon fibers, it takes three and four, that's correct, and one and two, and two and three, point two, point two, point two, point five. All right, so all of my uh, formulas are working correctly here. So I can go ahead and run my solver model here. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to add um, those extra constraints. Uh, time constraints that we were given to our uh, constraints table here. All right, so our total molding time, which is here in G6, so G6, total molding time has to be less than or equal to 70 hours, okay, and then let's see, H6, our total finishing time has to be less than or equal to 100 hours, okay, so those are some new constraints we have. Let's go ahead and add those into our solver model. So up on our data tab and solver, and we have our current model loaded in there right now. Okay, we're going to add a constraint. So G6 has to be less than or equal to 70. And H6 has to be less than or equal to 100. Okay, so we have those added in. Now we're going to run our solver model. All right. So Solver could not find a feasible solution. What does that mean? Well, we checked all of our formulas. We are pretty sure that it's not one of something like that that's um, causing Solver to run into a problem. And when Solver runs into um, an infeasible solution, it'll give you this extra um, option here to solve without integer constraints. We do have integer constraints, so let's see what happens when we solve without those. Let's say OK. All right, so we still could not find um, a feasible solution. So now we have the option of creating, uh, or excuse me, of looking at a few different reports. Now, the feasibility report um, will give you an analysis of the model um, and uh, break down all the different tests of the variations of the constraints um, for you so you can find out what constraint is causing you to have an infeasible solution. The feasibility bounds report gives you um, a similar report but it's not quite as extensive. All right? So I'm going to keep my solver solution so that I can see how far Solver got before um, it wasn't able to find a feasible solution. And I'm going to generate a feasibility report. Okay, let's go ahead and hit OK. And Excel will generate that report on a separate tab for you, similar to your answer reports. And it tells me here the um, constraints that it's ran into problems with. Okay, so finishing time, um, we weren't able to meet. All right. What this negative five means is that we were five over our um, constraint in order to create a solution. All right. Now these were binding, so we hit those. Okay, we hit both of our number of rackets produced. We were able to, but 
our finishing time is the one that's preventing us from finding a solution because that's the one that's going over all right we um, in order for Excel to find a solution it has to go um, five hours over the 100 hour limit that we set for it okay so that's very helpful basically what that report told us is we either need to reduce the number of rackets we're required to make okay or um, we need to increase the number of finishing hours that we're allowed okay because I, in order to produce 150 of each racket I need more finishing hours now to decide what I'm going to do, there's a couple different things I want to think about. Um, first off, um, go to page 578 in your book. And there's a picture there of a little graph. And the line on that graph represents the um, exact different, all the different combinations we can have of each different model of racket and still be at 70 hours of molding time okay so everything under the line is feasible it's everything's possible because the line is all the options that produce exactly that take exactly 70 hours of molding time now if you look across the page at 579 there's another graph and that graph is of the uh, all the different combinations of model one model two rackets that take 100 hours of finishing time okay so i have this model of this graph of um, my feasible solutions of molding time and i have a graph of feasible solutions of finishing time and if you turn your page to page 580 and look at that picture those are the two graphs put on top of each other and the area where they intersect is the optimal solution for um, producing each type of racket um, and meeting both of those constraints and everything underneath that in this gr uh, shaded area is feasible okay and if you look at that graph the point at which you pr we can produce 150 of each racket is outside that feasible solution area okay so unless one of our constraints our binding constraints are loosened there's not going to be a feasible solution to this problem so we either need more than 100 hours of finishing time or we need to be able to produce less than 150 of one of our rackets okay those are the constraints that are binding us to an infeasible solution so um, what Beth went and did is she talked to um, the production manager and he said that there's no way he can give us more time because there's no overtime in the budget so he doesn't have any more production time that he can give us so then we went and talked to our boss and he says that okay um, you can reduce the number of the model 2 rackets you make but you still have to make at least a hundred so what we need to do now is we need to change this uh, model 1 quantity to 100 or excuse me this model 2 quantity to be 100 instead of 150 and he says use all of our extra resources to produce um, any extra model 1's and what that means is that in effect this constraint on our model 1 ra um, uh, rackets is basically moot okay it's no longer needed so we're just going to go ahead and delete that all right we don't need that constraint anymore so let's go back into our solver and we can see here this one no longer works because I deleted that so we're going to delete that constraint all right let's run this solver model again now solver was able to find a solution now that we loosened our constraints all right so let's go ahead and um, keep our solver solution and I can see that now 
I'm only making 100 of the Model 2 rocket, rackets, but I'm making 250 of the Model 1 rackets. And everything is within my constraints, both my finishing time and my molding time. Okay? So that is um, fixing a undefined, excuse me, infeasible solution in Solver. Go ahead and um, complete the steps to success on page 582.